Because we're not. Okay, so we graph our parabola. And then minus 2 on the outside does what to the whole graph? Drops it down 2. So she had the, you should have the exact same thing drop down. And the next one, if I have a minus 4 in there with the x, that really means to go right 4. So you should shift everything over to the right 4. What does multiplying by 2 on the outside like that do to the whole thing? So it kind of, it's weird because it has the same effect here. When you're multiplying the whole thing by something, it's going to make it bigger or smaller. When I take a parabola, right? So imagine a parabola. If I'm going to make it bigger, it does shrink it, right? Because it's like I'm taking it and I'm pulling it up. So, right? If someone grabbed your hands and they pulled it up, don't you kind of, it looks like it's shrinking. It, it is. It's doing both. But what you're really doing is you're taking all your y values and you're multiplying them by 2. So it's going to look like I have a more narrow u shape. Okay, so double check that you have some of these key points. You should still be at zero, zero, and then you should be at one comma two. Right, because normally I'd be at one comma one. So when I have something like this, I'm multiplying the y values by two. So this y value of one now becomes a y value of two. This y value of four now becomes a y value of eight. Right? So instead of being at 2 comma 4, now I'm at 2 comma 8. That's how I get so high up here. Same thing is happening on the other side. Okay? What's happening in D? Right to and up to. So I'm not stretching, shrinking, or anything. I'm just going to pick it up and move it. Right to, up to. Okay, and then E we already talked about. We're going to factor out that 2. So now I am going to multiply all the Y values by 2, but I'm also going to move it to the right one. So now I have all those parts. Did we get to the back yet? Well, let's see how far we go. We can at least talk about what they should look like uh, real quick. So you should have this parent function, your reciprocal function, asymptotes at both axes. Uh, in letter A, what is that plus 3 doing? To the, to the left 3, yes. You should have picked up your graph. So your whole asymptote moves everything to the left 3. What does this do? I'm going to take every y value and multiply it by 3. So I used to be at 1 comma 1. Now I'm going to be at 1 comma 3, right? And you can just take a couple of those key points that you had and multiply them by 3. So it should look roughly like that. C, what does that thing do? Down 1 and left 2. Picking that graph up left two down one. Asymptotes move, everything moves. D, we run into something similar that we had on the other side. I want to factor out that two. So pull out that two, and now I have two x minus two. So remember, if I'm multiplying the x, I'm going to condense as my accordion is going to shrink in. And then I'm also going to shift everything to the right two units. So I picked it up and I moved it to the right. And you can see that all of my dots, instead of being sort of spread out here, they're all condensed. They're all kind of squished in there. And then E is a weird one because we're just... That tells me to flip it over your y-axis. And then this tells me to flip it over the x-axis. So you're doing both. So you end up with an image exactly like the original. Okay, did you guys finish four? Okay, I would like you to finish four, and then I'm also going to give you this, but I'll just ask you to do the front side of the sheet.
of the sheet that I'm giving you now. Does someone have their next class with Rachel?